Hey everybody, it's CJ Wiley back with some more adventures uh, on the road, some stories. I'm cruising around Arkansas right now. I'm so much out in the middle of nowhere that my navigational system won't even work. So I'm just driving. I hope I'm going the right way and uh, going to tell a few stories. One of the best road men that I ever traveled with was a guy named Junior Welton. He was from, uh, I think he was from Tucson, Arizona. He had a pool room out in Scottsdale for a few years, and uh, he was known to be one of the best one-handed players in the world, uh, probably second best behind little Sergio, who was from California. He always said Sergio uh, had the upper hand on him, but Weldon was uh, an incredible player, uh, one-handed. Uh, just, if, if you'd have to see it to believe it. <clears throat> anyway, the first time I ever met Weldon, of course, I didn't know him. I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I was in this bar, and I got to playing with this guy, and, uh, you know, I didn't know, but he's just messing around with me. We're playing like 20 a game. I'm stalling with him. He's stalling with me. So then he quits, and he says, listen, he says, if you want to bet real high, he says, I'll tell you what I'll do. He says, if you give me the five, seven, and the break, I'll play one-handed, and you can play two. And I thought about it, and I was like, that sounds pretty good. You know, if he doesn't run out every time, you know, I'm going to win, you know, and how's he going to do that one-handed? So anyway, we uh, put up $1,000 and uh, played a set for it. Well, we're playing two-shot shootout, which everybody played back then. All the gamblers played two-shot. Two shot. We called it uh, roll-out or push-out, two-shot shootout. It's where you could uh, roll the ball out. You didn't ever have to kick you would just roll out to a shot, and there's a lot of offensive shots where you're taking uh, uh, free shots. You know, there's offensive, defensive components. You had to bank real good. Your shot making had to be real good. And the strategic part of the game was vastly superior to how they play now. So the gamblers all preferred it. So that's what we were playing. So I'm playing two-handed. He's playing one-handed. And... Uh, and I could see pretty quick, man, this guy played good. <laughs> you know, he could, uh, he broke the balls good. And uh, it was going to, it didn't look like I was going to be able to beat him. So uh, I went over to my uh, partner at the time, Chuck, and I said, man, I said, I think I'm in a bad game. I said, this guy, uh, you know, it plays unbelievable one handed. Chuck said, well, just figure it out. <laughs> figure out how to beat him. So, uh, I thought about it a little bit, and I thought, well, there's one thing that he can't do one-handed that I can do two-handed, and that's jump the balls. So what I started doing was, whenever I rolled out, I would just roll out behind another ball, and uh, he couldn't shoot it. He had to make me shoot it, and I'd jump over the ball and run out. Well, uh, I got in stroke and, and played real good and ended up beating him the set. Man, he was, uh, he was not a happy camper is all I can say. And, uh, you know, he wanted to play the next day. So uh, I told Chuck later, I'm like, uh, it was like playing Vernon Elliott. It was like I felt like I was in a bad game and didn't want to, uh, didn't want to play anymore. So I had Chuck call him up and make some excuse, and uh, I didn't go back to play. Meanwhile, uh, Weldon started matching up with the locals there and beat him out like 15,000 with him playing one-handed and then playing two because he just used – the fact that he had lost to me to uh, match up the games because nobody had really seen they didn't know really what I knew I could see because I was playing him how great he was anyway uh, Junior Weldon and I uh, ended up becoming good friends and traveling on the road and uh, there was a lot of stories I got about him we won probably over a hundred thousand dollars together and uh, we were a dynamic duo boy with him playing that one-handed he also played two-handed uh, just a notch under championship level and at times he could be just about anybody on a bar table So anyway, he taught me a lot He uh, he also played that touch of inside type style where he had that cue ball on the string all the time and uh, Hit that dead ball most of the the top-notch gamblers played that style and that's what I teach uh, in my touch of inside videos, so if you like this story and you want to learn more about what I've learned from these top-notch road players and gamblers, join me at my private membership site, www.masteringpocketbilliards.com. I've got over seven and a half hours of instructional videos on there. I just uploaded uh, seven new ones. I'm going to continue to upload 
new ones uh, on a regular basis, also have question and answers. So if you have a certain issue with your game, I'm going to offer uh, video instruction and uh, have some guests on to share their secrets as well. So if you want a personal coach, that's what I want to do. I want to do for you what uh, my road partners did for me, help you reach your full potential. So join me at www.masteringpocketbilliards.com, and I'll see you next time.